Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to go through ADCs, what they are and why we need them. So to start with, what is an ADC? Well an ADC is an analog to digital converter. It gets an analog signal and converts it into a digital signal. So in this little tutorial we're going to go through what is analog, what is digital and why would we need to convert them and then a little bit about how it converts them. So to start with, what is analog? Well, analog is from a few Greek words which mean proportionate. And analog is it's a concept which revolves around um, like a measurement scale sort of thing. So analog can be seen as offering an infinite amount of values. So for example, if we were to measure from 0 to 5 volts, it's analog. What sort of resolution do we want? Do we want to measure millivolts, microvolts? Do we want just to measure volts like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 volts? Um, well, with analog, it's unlimited. I mean, you could go into as much depth as you want. The same as other things like heights, uh, widths, etc. What precision do you want? It's analog. It can values are unlimited. So pretty much anything around us can be measured in analog. Well, actually, I say measured in analog, and analog isn't a measurement as such. It's more of a concept which, um, which sort of ties the physical world to a scale of some sort. So high length, weight, pressure, voltage, and a massive amount of other things are all measured in analog. So pretty much when um, we want to apply a measurement scale to something, most of the time it's analog. Uh, yeah, analog is simpler than it sounds. We actually use analog every day, or I do anyway. I'm sure most of you do. I mean, if it comes to weighing yourself on scales, um, measuring the amount of liquid in something for, uh, for baking a cake or whatever, it's all analog. Okay, so we know what analog is, and what's digital then? Well, digital, digital is not a measurement scale, it's nothing really to do with analog at all. It's a completely different concept. It's from a Latin word meaning finger or digit, like a, a finger or a thumb or something like that. Um, and digital is a concept of representing data by means of either a high or a low, a one or a two, uh, or an on or an off. So it's a way of representing data using either one value or another value. So there are only two choices to apply to a value. So, for example, as a switch on, well, applying a digital, uh, applying the digital concept would work fine with that because one could represent yes and zero could represent no. So, is a switch on, yes or no? It's an easy one. But saying something like, um, you know, how much open is a door? Well, that would be analog because you can't apply either a yes or a no to it. You'd need that. You'd need some sort of scale. So in digital, values greater than 0 or 1 are based on a collection of zeros or 1s, or a collection of highs and lows, or offs and ons. So why do we need an ADC? Why do we need a converter? Well, low-level electronics can't read analog as humans can. Well, in fact, they can't read analog at all, really. Low-level electronics can read digital, they can only assess whether something is high or low or on or off. So um, electronics can only read binary or they can only work with binary. So I don't know if you remember that, but of course binary is a numbering system which can be either zero or one. And this ties in very closely with digital because digital uses binary. So, okay, I'll try and illustrate this now and provide some examples. So, if we read in an analog voltage between 0 volts and 1 volt into a microprocessor or something like that, 
the microprocessor would see nearer to zero as low and nearer to one volt as high. So remember, digital or microprocessor can only see high or low, it can't see a scale. So if you're running read in an analog voltage between zero and five volts, well, if it was closer to zero, it would read low. If it's closer to five, it would read high. Yeah, there's no precision, there's no scale. It's simply high or low. So how can we get a processor to distinguish um, between potentially thousands of values when it can only detect high and low? So, for example, I said about a door before, if you want to measure how open or how closed a door is, well, how can you do that? Because the processor can only say, or can only understand if something is closed or open, on or off, high or low. It can't detect scales, and it can't detect precision. It has no precision. So, yeah, basically we need to get an analog uh, value and convert it, convert it into digital. Okay, so we know we need to convert an analog signal into a digital signal, but how does we, how do we do this and how does it work? Okay, so let's go with that same example again. Let's say we feed in a five volt analog signal, and now we need more pre more precision. So we need to know if it's low or high is not good enough. We need to know the voltage. Yeah, do you remember bits, bits and bytes? Well, if you remember rightly, a bit is either 0 or 1. It's a space for either 0 or 1. And bytes is a, is a collection of 8 bits. Well, it's bits we need to focus on for this, this tutorial. Okay, so if we were trying to measure from 0 to 5 volts and we needed a scale, in other words, we needed to find out how much into or how much between 0 and 5 volts the signal being read in actually is, we can't do it with a bit because we can in a bit we can either store 0 or 1, so we can either store low or high. That's not going to work for measuring um, a voltage between 0 and 5. So what we can do is we can add another bit to it. So we've got two bits. So we've got 0 and 1, or potentially 0 and 1, and we've got another 0 and 1. So we'll call this a word. So we can resolve four values from having two bits. So we've got 1, character 1, which could be 0 or 1, and character 2, which could be 0 or 1. So this gives us a potential to have four values. So we've got 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Quite straightforward up to now. Now, okay, so instead of giving the um, microprocessor 0 to 5 volts and getting an answer back being high or low, well, now we've got four values and we're giving it two bits we can get a bit more resolution here because we've got potential for four values. Okay, so if we divide five volts by three, I know it says four up there, but remember, we've got to um, we've got a zero value as well. So if we divide five volts by three, we'll get four steps. It will actually give you 1.66, and that's the amount per step. So the first one, zero zero, can represent 0 volts. The second one, which is 0, 1 in binary, can represent 1.66 volts. 1, 0 in binary can represent 3.32 volts. And finally, 1, 1 can represent um, 5.98 volts. Okay, so by storing or by using two bits instead of one bit, we can get more resolution. So, as you can see, the resolution is still very, very limited, but we've got some resolution. Okay, and then here's an example. So, we're feeding in 0 to 5 volts, and we're actually feeding in 3.8 volts. So, you can see here, this is DC. You can see a straight line, 3.8 volts DC. Now, if we were to use one, um, one bit, which a microprocessor does by default, um, 
it would see that that's closer to high, it's closer to 5 volts, so it would read high. If we fed it maybe 2 volts, it would see it as low and it would read low. But now, now we're using 2 bits instead of 1 bit, we can get more resolution and the 3.8 volts would now resolve to 3.32 volts because of the 4 steps, that's the closest one. So it, it would resolve to that. So we were talking about bits just a second ago and we had little codes. We had 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and then 1, 1. Well, it's resolved to here and therefore it would output 1, 0. So binary 1, binary 0. So the word it would transmit would be 1, 0. So if you were to send this to a microprocessor, the microprocessor would read high and then low. It'd read 1 and then 0, high and low. And you can see here, um, it's high and then it's low. Okay, so we've got some resolution and we're outputting something, but it's not really enough resolution for everyday use. So we'll use the same logic as before, but add more bits to it. So if we allow 3 bits per word, that allows 8 resolutions. If we allow 4 bits per word, that allows 16 resolutions. So now we're getting somewhere. So if we take the same example again, and we get 5 volts, and split it into 16, well take away 1 because we need 1 for position 0, um, 5 volts divided by 15 equals 0 0.33, so that's 0 0.33 volts per step. We can now resolve to each 0 0.33 volts or 330 uh, millivolts. So now going back to the binary, we've got binary 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0001, 0, 0, 0010, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, etc. All the way up to 1111, 1, 1, which is I believe it's called full scale deflection. So here are our words now. So you can see we've got a lot more resolution now. We've got 16 potential values to, uh, to transmit. So all of this conversion, getting an analog signal and then converting it into a word, um, into binary, Obviously, we need something to do that, and that's what an ADC does, and that's why we need it. Okay, so what next? Well, the ADC sends the bits in the word uh, to the microprocessor, and then the microprocessor is capable of reading those bits, so it may read high, 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 low, high, high, etc. There are, there are 16 different combinations for that particular word size. And when it gets the um, binary word and converts it to a number, then we can make sense of that number. Yeah, the microprocessor reads the four bits. The microprocessor knows the word length of the four bits and will know to only read those four bits at a time. So the microprocessor will count up to the corresponding number. So, for example, 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0 equals 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 equals 1, 0, 0, 1, 0 equals 2, all the way up to 15. So, 0 to 15, so 16 potential values. And then from that number there, yeah, well, the value can be presented to the programmer. And then from the number it gets here, 15, 6, 7, whatever it is, the program can then scale the value back up using the same algorithms but in reverse. So we know that the, yeah, here we go. So for example, if the value is 12, 12 multiplied by 0 0.33, which is the amount of voltage step per, per number here, um, we can multiply the number by the voltage step and get the actual voltage that was input. So we can know the analog value which was initially entered into the ADC um, and we can work it out. So um, if, the, if the conversion is 0, 0, 1, 0 or 2, you know that uh, the voltage entered in is 0 0.66 volts. 
and that's how they work. So, we've got over the analog to digital problem. So we've got an analog signal coming in to measure voltage or something. And we've converted it and got a digital output. And because we have a digital output from the ADC, we can then read the digital input into a microprocessor. So if we tie them all together, we can get an analog input and import digital input into the microprocessor with that already converted. And that's what an ADC does. So in my examples, I gave you an example of a one bit, um, well, kind of like a one bit ADC. And then we expanded it and went to a four bit ADC. But in reality, that's quite a low, a low amount of bits and most use a lot higher. There's one called the MCP3008 and that's a 10 bit ADC. I'll be doing some videos about that another time. So yeah, 10 bits, 2 to the power of 10 is 1024. So we have 1024 points to, um, to use. So if we get 5 volts divided by 1024, that's the amount of voltage per, per um, point. So that's a really good resolution. And there we go. So that's my um, little video over. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was useful. If it was useful, then um, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And you can be kept up to date with my videos to come.